Don't forget you've only got till February 26th to enter to win your North Star Light. Go to theslenderlens.com, enter to win your North Star Light. Hi, this is JP Morgan. I'm out on location today with Caleb and Lars, and we're going to show you how to turn a bedroom into a home studio. We're going to show you how to create a very simple backdrop holder you can put on the wall that takes up very little space. We'll show you how to control the window light that comes through the windows. And then last of all, some lighting, kind of things you can make at home. Then we're going to show you how to set up your lights for a two light video interview, and we'll finish with that. So let's get started and see what we can do. Just a couple of things to think about before you start your studio in your extra bedroom. One is the color of the walls. If you've got walls like this, which are great, they're neutral, they're not gonna bounce any color back into your image, they're perfect. But if you've got a room that has very heavy color, greens or reds or those kinds of things, they're gonna bounce right into your shot, you're gonna kill your color balance. So the first thing I'd do, I'd get out a paint roller and I'd roll some paint on all those walls so you got a neutral room, neutral color. Secondly, I'm gonna put a tarp on the floor just to protect the hardwood floor. Lay it on the floor, it's gonna all be brown. And that's gonna give us a nice neutral color. It's not gonna bounce any blue back into the shot or green. So there's our first principle of getting our home studio started. Believe it or not, in my hand, I have a very simple backdrop holder or a way to hang your backdrop on the wall. What it is is half inch galvanized pipe. You get a plate that's going to screw into the wall. We simply screw in a three inch pipe. I now screw in an elbow. And now a six inch return, or you can make these longer. That's a very simple one half of our backdrop holder. So you can put this thing against the wall like that. You can put your seamless on it. You can put it on the ceiling, put your seamless on it. It gets everything out of the way. You don't have to have stands on the floor that create a big problem in the background. It just makes this very easy. You also can put on here a one inch conduit. That one inch piece of conduit is very rigid. So it's much heavier and stronger than if you use PVC or other items but it's gonna give you a great pole to be able to put your backdrop on as this hangs from the ceiling. Now, unfortunately, because we're in someone else's apartment here, we can't shoot these into the ceiling, but if I was doing this in my house, I would shoot these into the ceiling or into the wall. Once you have your two backdrop holders, you're going to get these right distance from each other. Obviously, you kind of understand the principle. We have our one inch conduit. So speed that onto yours there. Now on my end, I'll bring this out to where it's gonna go on there. I can slide this back about that far. And then we're gonna put an A-clamp on each side to keep this from falling on. Again, we would have this up into the ceiling against the wall, so it's a great way to get your backdrop up and not have C-stands and stuff on the floor that's gonna eat up all your space in the room. Great for tight areas. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is put our backdrop up. This is a cheap backdrop that I got off from Amazon. It's a white backdrop, it was like 30 bucks. It's got a pocket in one end. And there's our pocket that's been sewed into one side. And the drop itself, I think, is 20 feet. So it's gonna give us a long area. I can run that pocket on here, and that's great because it hangs very nicely. You do one of two things. Either sew a new pocket on the other end, but then you've gotta sew that pocket so there's just enough distance to be able to put this thing right to the floor. So I do the opposite. I'm gonna put the pocket on the floor with another pipe in it. I'm gonna drape the drop over this and A-clamp it to this bar. And that way I can use the pocket on the bottom with the pipe in it to create weight so it'll take all the wrinkles out of the backdrop. Then if I wanted to, I could flip it around and hang the pocket here and I could sweep it out as a seamless, be able to use the whole piece. So Now we got a lot of wrinkles on this backdrop. It's a little hard for that to be really smooth. We may have to steam it out a little bit to get rid of some of that. But one thing that you can do, if you're just gonna use it as a backdrop and you're not gonna sweep it, is take this other pole that Caleb's gonna grab for me and we're going to put this we're gonna roll our backdrop up on this extra pipe. So if this sits here for a day or two, all those wrinkles will start to go away. One of the first things you need to get for your studio is a stool. You can get these at Walmart, Kmart, Target, any of those kinds of places. They usually have a three foot stool. Get a wood one, get a metal one, whatever you like. But you gotta have something for someone to sit down on so you can pose and work with them. Three foot stool. And we're ready to take a picture with our natural light studio. So there's putting up a fabric backdrop. The problem with fabric backdrops is they wrinkle, you gotta try to keep them straight, you can, but they're longer so you can comb them out. They're very nice in that way. But a simpler solution, you can get a Savage or several different companies to make a seamless. A nine foot wide seamless or a 12 foot wide. 12 foot are very expensive. A nine foot wide seamless is perfect. You just put it up there, drop it down to be able to get a backdrop behind them or you can roll it onto the floor if you wanna do full length. So let's put up a seamless and just see how that works on our backdrop setup. So you can see up there, I put the cast back on, so that's the way that would be hanging up there. All we would see is that pipe on the ceiling. So there's our seamless. 
you'd have to set your uh, backdrop holders on the ceiling at a distance that'll make it so that that cardboard tube will work. It's just easier to have the seamless on this pole and that way you can slide it out work it. So the advantage of a cloth backdrop is that they are going to last a lot longer. They do get dirty so you have to wash them sometimes. But the disadvantage is that they're harder to keep wrinkle free, they're harder to roll up and to be able to use. Whereas a seamless rolls out very easily, rolls up very easily, but you get things like this that start to happen to them. They don't, they don't last forever. But you do have it, so you can take and cut out the paper off the bottom and just roll more paper out and you get a new one. This is an older seamless that's kind of seen its day. So let's go ahead and we'll get a couple of shots on the seamless of Caleb. We've got a window light that's giving us light from the right hand side of the frame. But now what we're going to do is we're going to control that light from the window so that we can either have it as part of our shot or we can get rid of it completely. So we're going to put some Eclipse blackout curtains you can get from Amazon. They're really, really quite inexpensive. They're 20 or 30 dollars. These are going to put up on our window. It'll give us the ability to either use this, open it up and use these, or close it off and be able to do a completely controlled light in this room. If I were doing this and I didn't have this little setup on the side, I would put these on another bar and put this bar up on that wall, either with a set of these uh, clamps that could hold them up or put them on the curtain uh, rods that are already there. Just some way to get these black up curtains on there. Usually I want them to exceed the frame of the window because if you just get it on the frame of the window, the light still bleeds through. So I would exceed the frame, get them very close, and that'll black them out. We blacked out the window, and that's why you can't see me very well. But it's pretty effective. Those blackout curtains called the clips are just heavy, and they'll take all the light out. Another thing it's done when we added light here on the camera left side is that it's not going to bounce into a white wall over here. So it's going to give us the ability to have a little more dramatic, a little more creative lighting. Because in this room, ceilings are low, walls are close. When you put one light up, it's bouncing everywhere. This at least takes this one wall out of the way. And if you put your light on the camera left side and aim it to your subject, most of your light is going to be off that camera left wall. It's going to be hitting into this black curtain. And it's going to give us a nice light on our person without a lot of fill. Now you can control the fill. You can bring it up or down depending on what you want to do. So now we need to have lights. We're going to show you some simple things you can build. And you know, those are interesting and kind of a beginning place. Uh, but then we're going to show you using just some really decent lights. You will know, give you a good light on your person to do an interview here. And then Lars and I will do our trends from the trenches on this setup today. All right, we're going to talk about lighting. We're going to talk about homemade lighting. You know, there's several things you can do. Everyone starts out with this little baby right here. They go to Home Depot. They buy one of these little things on uh, whatever aisle it's hiding on. And they plug it in, put a piece of diffusion on the front. Clamp this onto an inexpensive stand, you've got a light. That's a simple, very easy way to start. Uh, these things, you can put a 100 watt bulb into them. They actually have a 300 watt bulb at Home Depot. I don't think these are rated for that, but they do have a 300 watt bulb. But these give you a starting place for light. The hard thing about these is that they're, the reflector is very hard and it's very focused and it just sends light everywhere. So not my favorite solution, but it's not a terrible solution. For eight bucks, it's not horrible. So now let's go on to making a softbox. The softbox is simply a four-sided container that keeps your light around your light and then a nice soft diffusion in the front so you can keep your light more controlled. It gets the light away from the light bulb, the diffusion material, and it lets the light bounce around inside the softbox so you get a softer light as it comes out. It does have a directional quality about it because you are looking straight at the light, looking through the diffusion, so you have a diffused, a cross diffused and focused light source at the same time. So let's talk about how to make a softbox. I have three different options. I have a plastic detergent container here that we get from Smart and Final here in California. Just your normal everyday laundry detergent. This is a little heavy, but it might work. I have a cooler, which is styrofoam. What's interesting about styrofoam is that styrofoam on set is an incredible diffuser as far as bouncing light. Bouncing light out of a piece of bead foam, as they call it. This has that same kind of quality. This is going to be a soft and a nice light coming out of this cooler. And it comes with a reflector. I've got a banker's box, which again is a soft box with a detachable reflector. So let's put these together and just see how successful they are. I'm going to start with an inch and 3 8 drill bit. Very, very simple. I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it right in the back of my plastic container. And I'm going to drill a hole. Now we have a hole to be able to attach our light to. I'm going to start with this light, and Caleb's going to hand me a 
pair of yellow handled tin snips out of the tool bag that I can cut this open with. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this little tin part off the front of here like this. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this little ring is what's going to sandwich this in around my container for my softbox. So we're going to disregard this. And now I've got a ring here. If I don't cut my hands as I loosen it. So this is going to go through this opening. So I'm going to move this clamp here from the front to the back. And I know that's not exactly the way it's meant to be used, but quite frankly, uh, as a softbox holder, isn't uh, exactly the way it's meant to be used either. So we'll tighten that on there. So now this can go through the hole like this. Perfect. And this will twist on the front. So it'll hold it in place. Put that 300 watt light bulb in there. And then I'm going to tape a piece of diffusion paper on there. And then we had to use an A-clamp to help the little bracket that's going to hold it on the stand because that's not very tight. That bracket doesn't work very well. So we put an A-clamp on there. You got a nice little light coming through the light. It also gives us a little bit of glow around it, which is something we hadn't really anticipated, but kind of a cool thing. So we'll put a piece of diffusion on the front. So there you have it, a 300 watt light bulb in a laundry detergent bucket. And there's what the quality of light looks like on my face. It has a little bit of an overall fill in the room because the bucket itself is glowing. So you got the key light on the face and a little bit of glow in the room, which is an interesting look. You can make that for about $9.50. $15 with a light bulb and you get laundry detergent so you get clean clothes. Option number two is a styrofoam cooler. I think this has a lot of promise and we're going to drill a hole in the bottom of the cooler. Now for our styrofoam cooler softbox, we're going to take again our metal container, put that in there. We're going to cut this open again. All right, now I'm going to slide that in the front here. Attach that onto the front, just like we did before. Now this is much lighter than our plastic tub because the cooler is just so, so light. Looking inside here, we're gonna put our 300 watt light bulb in there. Now another option that we have here, bought this on the internet, bought everything on the internet, and there's an adapter. We could twist this in, and this would give us the ability to use just four regular household light bulbs on this, and that would be Put those in just like that, which really makes it nice if you want to just use your regular household light bulbs. And you can use four of them, so you can get it up to 400 watts. But right now we're going to use just a single and put a 300 watt, so we can kind of compare it with what this one looks like. Hook it onto our stand. This one has a little bit of a glow around it as well, not as much as the last one. So there I am being lit by the Styrofoam Cooler Softbox. It's pretty light. It doesn't bounce near as much as the other one did. The back of the cooler is more secured. Also, the front diffusion is a little further away from the bulb, which gives us a little more directional light. But for a 300 watt light bulb you buy at Home Depot for $4.99, it's a pretty decent setup. Okay, now we're going to make a soft box out of a banker's box. And the reason we chose a banker's box is because it's white. So the first thing we're gonna do is separate it on that edge right there. Turn it over and reattach it. So it's going to be inside out. So now as we turn our stuff in, we'll separate the box here like that. Now we've reversed our box to a white interior. The only problem that you have is that this is on the wrong side, but we'll just tape that down. So again, we've got our banker's box. We'll take and we will drill a hole in the back. So I'm gonna cut another one of these off like this. Okay, this is a little easier. I'm not gonna have to move that bracket to the back, which is a better place for that bracket to be because the cardboard is so much thinner. It's nicer than to print softbox uh, assembly instructions on the inside of the softbox. So you can use that for later. So we're gonna attach our softbox to a stand, with a little clamp on the back. It's got the tape. It's gonna use an A clamp for security. And then we're going to tape on, actually we're gonna put our 300 watt light bulb in the front. And there is our banker's box softbox. 
It's a very soft light actually, and I think that's because it doesn't bounce around as much in there as it did with the styrofoam, and the plastic was a harder surface, kind of knocked the light out the front of the box a little harder. This seems very soft. It's actually not a bad light at all. So let's wrap this up. We've got a soft box made out of a banker's box, very soft. We've got a box, a soft box made out of a soap detergent box, and that was kind of a little more illuminant, but it's still very soft. Our styrofoam cooler was a little harder and a little brighter, almost a stop brighter. But in the end, when you look at all these different lights, the color's off, it's kind of all over the place. This is fun. We're gonna light our trends with the trenches with these just because it's a fun thing to do. But in the end, if I'm gonna work and take these on set somewhere, one, they're not gonna transport because they're gonna fall apart. And two, I can't walk into a, a CEO's office with a detergent softbox. You know, it just makes you look like you aren't really a working uh, professional videographer or photographer. So you need an entry level kind of tungsten light. And even if you're doing a home studio, get a good set of entry level tungsten lights so you can set up, get your lighting just right, and it really becomes a workable situation you can use for years and years and years. A great one is a Starlight by Photoflex. You know, you can get a great setup with those. You can use on location, they're very durable, great soft boxes with really on color light and ease of use, the ability to transport, it's really the way to go. But anyway, the box is made out of a detergent box and the, you know, a banker's box are fun. So let's go on to our trends from the trenches. We're gonna show how to set our lights up so it's uh, easy to do and then we'll get to our trends from the trenches. Let me just kind of wrap up what we've done today. We talked about creating a studio in your home, a small room that you're going to make into a studio space. The principles I want you to understand from this are one, make sure the walls are neutral color. Two, you put up black curtains to cover your window, which kills some of the bounce in the room so that you can really get a little more dramatic light, but gives you the option of opening those curtains so you can use window light if you want to do that as a light source. It really gives you different options there. Two, that you can create a, a drop holder for your ceiling that you can get out of the way. You don't have to have the expense of the stands and you don't have the floor space of the stands that takes up. So you can get those stand, rid of those stands, put the drops on the wall or in the ceiling. Very easy backdrop container to make. You know, making things, I'm not a huge fan of making things. I'm just not. Uh, but when they work and that backdrop holder really does work, then it's worth it. There isn't anything else out there. I mean, there are other things. You get little things, you can roll them up and down. There's a lot of stuff out there, but that one's cheap and easy and it really works, so it's worthwhile. The soft boxes were great. They have great light, they're fun, but we did our trench from the trenches and they were starting to fall apart a little bit. They were kind of uh, disintegrating a bit. I expect them to burst into flames at any moment. So, but anyway, it was an interesting experience, but again, if you want to get into decent lights, you gotta get into something like the Starlight gives you a decent light you can use and travel with and really becomes a, a professional piece of equipment. Don't forget you've only got till February 26th to win your North Star Light. Go to thuslanderlens.com and enter to win your North Star Light. I hope you enjoyed our lesson on creating a studio out of your spare bedroom. You know, kick your dog out of that spare room or your husband or your wife or whoever's in that spare room and make yourself a home studio because it's a great thing to have. We want to welcome our new sponsor, Squarespace. They are a great web platform, great for hosting, for galleries, for video. Check it out. They have some excellent templates. They're a new sponsor of ours, so we're going to talk a little more about web design in the future. So check out Squarespace. It's a great platform. If you like us on Facebook, Barney will give you kisses for Valentine's Day. You're not kissing me.